Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome. We will continue factorial experiment. Today's topic is estimation using regression approach, model adequacy in terms of test of assumptions and sample size calculation for factorial experiments. So, in last lecture, last two lectures we have talked about factorial experiments and in last lecture we, I have given you the statistical analysis of fact, factorial like statistical analysis and you have seen that uh, when there are multiple factors for example, two factors. So, we have cal computed the sources of variations A, B, a B interaction error then total and I have given you the formula for S S A, S S B, S S A B, S S error and S S total and then the other part like ANOVA table for up to up to um, F, st F statistics. Okay. And uh, if you remember the model we consider is y i j k, then this will be mu plus tau i plus beta j plus tau beta i j plus epsilon i j k. And the estimate of mu we have given as that is y double triple dot bar then tau i estimate is basically mu i uh, mu i cap minus mu cap which is basically uh, y i dot dot bar minus y dot 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 triple dot bar in the in the same manner beta j cap equal to beta mu dot j cap minus mu cap which is basically y dot j dot bar minus y triple dot bar and then we have also computed tau beta i j cap which is mu i j cap minus mu cap then y i j dot bar minus y triple dot bar. No, here here formula is not this, here formula is minus mu i dot bar minus mu dot j cap plus mu dot plus mu cap. And then corresponding y bar is taken uh, and grand mean is this. So, that means by estimation of parameters we talk about estimation for mu grand mean estimation for tau i estimation for beta j estimation for tau beta i j and also computation of residuals which will be i j k cap. So, once we compute all those things this is basically our y i j estimate then in this one will be y i j k k minus y i j k estimate uh, this will give you the error terms or these are known as residuals. So, what using regression approach we will show you that how this same similar this formula are obtained and then we will go for uh, plot residual plots to check the model adequacy and finally, we will show you with 
uh, how to compute sample size given the threshold mean differences or given the parameter uh, population parameter values. So, <coughs> you see that y i j k this is our two factor factorial uh, fixed effect model. Here we have mu tau i beta j tau beta i j these are the parameters to be estimated. So, we have one mu a tau i b uh, b beta j and a b tau i beta j. So, that means we have 1 plus a plus b plus a b. So, we have how many parameters to be estimated? We have mu that is 1 mu plus y i j k equal to mu plus tau i we have i equal to 1 to a. So, a number of tau i plus beta j we have j equal to 1 to b. So, b number of tau b uh, beta j plus tau beta i j where i equal to 1 to a j equal to 1 to b. So, we have a b number of tau beta j and then plus error is there y i j k. So, this will be estimated one these things are estimated. Okay. So, that means our number of parameters to be estimated parameters to be estimated equal to 1 plus a plus b plus a b. And as a result as a result there are there are how many equations 1 plus a plus b plus a b normal equations. You have seen earlier that we found out S S E which is sum of epsilon i j k square and this will be basically sum of triple sum of mu plus tau i plus beta j plus tau beta i j this square and then you you we have done del s s e by del mu put 0 del s s e by del tau i equal to 0 i equal to 1 to a. Similarly, del s s e by beta j equal to 0 j equal to 1 to b and del tau beta i j sorry del s s e by del s s e by del tau beta i j this will put 0 and it will be i equal to 1 to a j equal to 1 to b. So, as a result this one gives one equation this gives a equation this gives b equations and this gives a plus a into b equations. So, total you will be having 1 plus a plus b a b normal equations. Okay. Now, using those normal equation and the constraint, so there are certain constraints. What are those constraints? Constraint are sum total of tau i i equal to 1 to a this estimate will become 0. Similarly, j equal to 1 to b sum total of beta j cap this will become 0. Similarly, tau j i equal to 1 to a tau beta i j this cap this will become 0 and and sum total of j equal to 1 to b tau beta tau beta i j that also will become 0. Obviously, everywhere you please remember i equal so here if i put i equal to 1 to a then j equal to here 1 to b here i equal to 1 to a okay the total into mu cap plus b n this b n into this plus a n into this sum of this plus this equal to this now we have seen that sum of this is 0 sum of this beta j is 0 and this also will become 0. So, a b and mu cap will become y triple dot. So, that means mu cap will be 
y triple dot by a b n sample size. Similarly, here this becomes 0 and this quantity, this quantity already known. So, this quantity you will calculate. So, in this manner if you go you will calculate this values like this. So, okay. now what is this values? Mu cap will be y bar triple dot tau y will cap will be y i dot dot bar minus y triple dot bar. Then your beta j cap will be y dot j dot bar minus y dot 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 bar and tau beta that i j that cap will be y bar i j dot minus y i dot dot bar minus y dot j dot bar plus y triple dot bar. So, i equal to 1 to a j equal to 1 to b. So, this is what is the parameter estimation using regression approach. Okay. So, as I told you in the first uh, I started with this, I told this one uh, that y i i dot bar minus this okay. the same thing this this equations, this equation what we have written here, these equations using the regression approach we are also getting the same equations. Okay. Now, I will show you one example and how do we compute all those parameters as well as their errors. So, this is what is the example which we have discussed earlier. Here basically self life is a response variable, pressure with three levels, temperature with three levels, controllable variables, four replicates in each experimental setting and then uh, these are the data hypothetical data we obtain. Now, using this data set and, and the formula what we have discussed here is in regression approach uh, this formulas using these formulas with the data set will be uh, we will be in a position to compute all the parameters for this two factor factorial experiments. Now, see what happened here. This raw uh, experimental data you know. What we have done here? We have created row total, row average, row treatment, column total, column average, column treatment. Okay. So, row total you see ultimately you see the data set here. Data set here row with respect to low, with respect to medium, with respect to high column with respect to low, respect to medium, respect to high for temperature. Then row, low to, row, row total for low will be total of 1, 2, 3, 4 into 3, 12 observations. Similarly, column total will be for another 12 observations. So, we have computed here. So, 30 plus 55 plus 26 plus 80, this is what is the cell total which is 191. Second cell total is 119, third cell total is 110. You sum up 191, 119, and 130, uh, 110. What you will get? You will get 420. So, that means this 420 is sum of all the values related to pressure low. Similarly, second one is sum of all the values related to pressure medium, all the values related to pressure high. So, these are all row total. Now, row total 420 divided by 12, because there are 12 observation will give you 35. So, then 35 is the row average for when. So, that means what happened? Achha, okay, I will come back later on. Then similarly, you find out the column total. Column total will be this, this cell total, this cell total plus this cell total. So, 191 plus 223 plus 176, this will be 590. Similarly, here 119 plus 79 plus 183, this is 381 and then 110, 142 and 70, 322. So, essentially what happened? Essentially what happened? You have pressure low, medium and high, this is pressure. 
then we have temperature also temperature is our low then our medium then high okay so this is temperature now what i said that we are computing we are computing here here we are computing rho total for the first row for the first row this one is 420 for the second row this is 444 for the third row 429 similarly we got column total column total is here we got 590 then 381 then 322 then what is the grand total grand total is sum of road total or sum of column total this is 1293 so in addition we have computed cell total means there are four observations one the total of that four total of these four total of these four like this so cell totals are here it is 191 then here it is 119 and here it is 110 then similarly he the second one cell total is 223 223 then your 79 then your 142 and third one is 176 then 183 then your 70 so 191 223 plus 176 this 3 plus 1 4 plus 16 this this total gives you 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 this like this so first you calculate row total this row total is y i double dot that is what is row total similarly column total is nothing but y dot j dot this is our column total then what i am saying you find out row average y bar i double dot so this is your row average so how do you compute the row average similarly find out row column average this equal to column average So, how do you find out? So, row total divided by number of observation will be 12. So, this will give you 420 divided by 12 will give you 35, 444 by 12 will give you 37, then, then your 429 by 35 will less 12 will give you 35.75. Similarly, column average you will find out 590 by 12 is 49.7, then 31.75, then your 20, uh, 26.86.83, 26.83. Then you find out the grand average, grand average means 1293 divided by 36 because you have a equal to 3 b equal to 3 n equal to 4 so a b n equal to 36 all total is to this divided by 36 this will give you 35.92 so from parameter estimation point of view this one is your y the triple dot bar which is an estimate of mu cap now what happened we will find we try to find out rho effect rho effect rho effect means what that is basically tau i cap okay so similarly find out the column effect this is nothing but beta 
j dot uh, sorry beta j cap. Okay. So, your tau i cap will be what that is mu i cap minus mu cap mu i cap minus mu cap it is nothing but mu i cap is this one minus mu cap is this one. So, this is basically y i t triple double dot bar minus y triple dot bar. So, in that sense what will happen 35 minus 35.92. So, this will be minus 0 0.92 similarly 37 minus this will be 1.08 similarly then the other one will be 0 0.16. So, these are the treatment effect for pressure. In the same manner if you subtract the column average from the grand average what you are getting here you are getting 13.25, here you are getting minus 4.17 and here you are getting minus 9.08. These are nothing but these are nothing but the beta j cap that is temperature effect. Interestingly, if you sum up this tau i this plus this plus this sum will will give you give you equal to 0. Here also if you sum up this will give you 0. So, that is the con restriction. So, from parameter estimation point of view mu cap is known now that is your 35.92 then tau i cap 4 values are known a 3 values are known minus 0 0.92 1.08 minus 1.16. So, this is what is tau i and beta j cap point of view you, you have 13.25 minus 4.17 minus 9.08. What more you want? You want tau beta cap i j. So, what is this computation? This will be y i j dot bar minus y i triple double dot bar minus y dot j dot bar plus y triple dot bar. It indicates that what is y i j bar? You have to how many observations are there in each of the cell? 4 observation this is the total divided by 4, this total divided by 4, this total divided by 4. So, every total divided by 4 will give you give you the cell average. Now, this minus row average minus column average plus grand average will give you that mean tau beta cap 1 1 then it will be y 1 1 dot bar minus y 1 dot dot bar minus y y y 1 dot bar plus y dot 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 bar. So, this will be 191 by 4 minus 35 minus 49.7 plus 35.9 this will give you a value called minus 0 0.50 in the same manner you compute okay, other values. Now, see the slide. So, we have these are the treatment of a row, row treatment pressure effect, column treatment temperature effect and these are the cell treatment effect interaction effects interaction effects. So, there will be how many interaction effects 3 cross 3 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. Now, you sum up across rows this plus this plus this equal to 0 across column this plus this plus this will be 0 these are the constants are satisfied. So, this is what is your parameter estimation in two factor factorial design with different levels. Okay. Now, what will be your predicted value? Predicted value will be you just see predicted value will be nothing but the cell average. Cell average will be the predicted value because if you if you see that the formula 
so y i j k equal to mu plus tau i plus beta j so tau beta i j plus epsilon i j k this is what is the predicted value now if you put this suppose y triple dot bar plus this one y i double dot bar minus y triple dot bar plus y dot j dot bar minus y triple dot bar plus you put y i j dot bar minus y i dot dot bar minus y dot j dot bar plus i dot 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 bar hmm, this one and plus error plus epsilon i j k. So, this one this will be cancelled out this and this will be cancelled out this and this will be cancelled out. Mm, cancelled out 1 y i dot bar one, this and this this and this will be cancelled out uh, sorry this is y dot j dot bar huh? so that means y dot j dot bar this will be cancelled out and and this is cancelled with this but this one will be cancelled out with this so, it will be remaining like this. So, y i j dot bar plus epsilon i j k and this is what is our y i j k predicted value plus error y i j k. So, this is nothing but the cell average. So, all cell averages are put here. So, when observation so, these are there will be there will be 36 observations and you are getting y value and y predictive value residuals you are getting this is what is the computation of residuals. Okay. Now, next is our adequacy test in adequacy test we will show you the residual plots first one is the q q plot quantile quantile plot you all know what you do basically you write down the errors from in ascending order. So, there will be 36 errors. So, you write down from ascending order mean suppose error if I say error if I write that residuals is E i and ascending order this and then you 36 is this one and then uh, you find out i minus 0 0.5 by n here n equal to 36 then you will be getting cumulative probability and then find out the corresponding z value assuming that errors are normally distributed. Now, plot these two. So, z value and residual. So, it, this is what is it is plot here and we found that there is a uh, there is a fit line straight line fitting to the origin. So, it is basically uh, it is normally uh, that are normally distributed. Similarly, plot of residuals you see the residual versus y predicted. So, you have the y predicted value, you have the residual values. So, you plot residual y predicted, there is no pattern. So, it gives us many things. For example, uh, that basically talk about that um, you know, that data independent and uh, on those kind of things are it is a, uh, this one is done. Okay. So, now here uh, uh, pre, uh, if I go for residual with individual that x values. So, it will it will give you that across x whether the residual is showing uh, a constant variance or not. So, from the plot here we, we cannot say that there is a, there is a change in variability of residual across pressure, but in case of across temperature there is little change, but may be that change is not that much significant change may be, but you require some other kind of test to uh, check whether the there is the various violation of homoscedasticity here or not, but from the plot there is slight difference. Then another important <coughs> thing is that sample size cal calculation. So in like one way and over we have we have given you the sample size calculation when the there are two issues when if you know the tau i is tau i beta j and tau beta tau beta i j these values are known then you will use one kind of formula if the values are not known then you have to and all and, and and the difference between two treatments 
or, or two means are given either row means or column means or uh, the interaction uh, effects the difference given then you will be using another kind of formula. First I will uh, let us see that if we consider that the difference between any two row means is d then the phi square will be computed like this. What is this phi square? n b d square by 2 a sigma square. Now, if the difference between any column means is d then it will be n a d square by 2 b sigma square and if it is um, any two treatment difference of any two interaction effect is d then the, the, the minimum value of phi square will be n d square by 2 sigma square into a minus 1 b minus 1 plus 1. This is what is the uh, what is what is the results uh, obtained from uh, statistical theory. Okay. So, then once we know phi square we know the phi then we know the uh, what is the sample uh, your degrees of freedom numerator denominator degrees of freedom and then using the O c curve we will be able to find out the beta value. For example, if you know if you choose a particular alpha and know the beta phi value and then knowing the degrees of freedom nu 1 and nu 2 you will be knowing that what is the probability of accepting a false hypothesis that is beta that can be computed. So, in this table we have given the suppose the tau i beta j and tau beta j this value this population values parameter values are known in that case you use this formulation and use the chart also, but it is hardly it is hardly known because it, it is difficult to know from the data what we know that we know the estimate of this and then we will choose a particular difference. Now, in this example I will show you only the suppose in if you go back to uh, the parameter estimates you see the treatment effects temperature treatment effects are very large uh, and also you have seen in the uh, in the two factor analysis of variance the temperature effect is significant. So, we are now we are now you finding out the uh, that this one the sample size uh, we in example considering the temperature level and its levels. So, suppose 40 hour that means that if the difference between mean life of a perishable product for between two temperatures is this 40 hours is the acceptable one and if you assume that the self uh, standard deviation is 25. Okay, so, this is uh, not from the, uh, the data we have computed the standard deviation we have assumed that it is 25 let it be it may not be. So, if this is the situation then phi square equal to this and then putting a b and d value sigma square value it will be 1.28 n and then uh, for different values of n you compute the phi square value and then phi value and you know the degrees of freedom uh, all those uh, all, all cases basically that a degree of numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom. Uh, so, <coughs> all those cases you will be computing once you know the a n values and these values are b values are known. So, now if numerator degrees of freedom is 2 denominator uh, ok this one is numerator another one denominator degree of freedom is 9 that is nu 1 and nu 2 and then uh, using your phi a phi is 1 uh, 160 one and then you have to you have to use appropriate one here here 2 3 and different values of nu 2 is given. So, this plot will, will not help you you require nu 1 equal to 2 and nu 2 equal to 9 that plot that plot then you will find out you will find out that the beta value is in the 0.45. Similar thing we have given in um, in one way analysis of variance when you talk about this uh, sample size calculation. Okay. So, you require 2 degrees of freedom that is nu 1 and nu 2 and you require phi and then you will be able to find out the beta value this beta value is computed here. Okay. So, if we consider that beta 1 power should be 90 percent or more or at beta values at max may be 0 
in that case you require four number of four sample size sample size should be four then you will be getting the desired level of beta value and in this example we have chosen for replication is four in this example replication is four okay so uh, this is what is your sample size calculation only one uh, mistake here is that we talk